A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, an opportunity today to honour the story of one of Australia's well-known artists. Talking to his biographer, who tells the story of how a labourer, grader, driver and house painter became a successful fine artist. Jeff Morgan has become a world-renowned panorama painter and a recipient of the Order of Australia Medal. We're talking today with Anne Winkle, who is Jeff Morgan's biographer. Hello, Anne. Welcome along to 2020. Thank you so much for having me. And how did it come about that you were asked to write Jeff Morgan's story? Okay, that is a little bit of an interesting one. I had a friend who was 80 year, years old. She was dying in Hawker and she was serene and ready to go to glory. And I was with her those last three days and Jeff's wife, Miriam, played the piano at the memorial service. So as a thank you, I gave her a copy of a book I'd written called Time Poor Soul Rich. And it just happened that her husband was the local artist and I gave him a copy of this teenage fiction novel I'd written called Wind Dance and he read it that night and he loved it. Now, the next day, Miriam came to me and she said, Jeff's life is an adventure story and at times a mystery. Would I consider writing his life story? And to my own surprise, I just said yes. <laughs> And that meant you spent, is it months in Hawker three. and getting oh. to getting to know the whole family? Well, it's been three years since that request. Um, I did then go back a year later and spend two weeks or three weeks with the family and another couple of weeks then in the next year. So I've spent a good more than a month, I think, in their home and driving around to all of Jeff's haunts with him. Um, but, yes, it's been three years since that first request to when the book has been launched this weekend just passed. Uh, your book is called Paint in the Blood. And give us a little insight here because you've got this contrast uh, from someone who was a house painter uh, transitioning to a landscape artist. I mean, that's it's quite a, a transition, isn't it? Yes. So Jeff had been a labourer to start with in the Woods and Forest Department when he left school and then a grader driver. Then he'd become a house painter. He had very successful business. So the opening chapter of the book basically starts with the crisis that led to him not being a house painter and becoming um, an artist. And the first chapter is called Injected by the Paint Gun, Close Call Number 18, which is a bit of a hint as to how many close calls had happened before that. And then we go back to his childhood. But um, yeah, he had a he had an industrial accident where he literally uh, hit the not he hit the trigger on the what's that called the very powerful um, paint gun. Uh, yep, uh, yep, yep, yeah. whatever that thing's called. Yep, they're they're, they're very um, on the compressor on the compressor, gun, and it filled his hand with paint, and it was a very bad accident, and he really had to give up his. Um, his work as a house painter after that. And there was a sort of a catalyst then, which is a bit of a secret in the book. There's, it comes out later in the book as to what actually happened that led to that transition to being an artist. But, yeah, there was something very significant that happened in his life at that point. So an accident, it really did put paint in the blood. It did. It did. And, you know, a house painter, some will say, well, that is my canvas, a very big canvas, Yes. And uh, Jeff Morgan is known for painting very big canvases too. Some of his artworks are huge, aren't they? Well, the first big panorama he did is 30 metres around and a couple of metres high, and then, then the next one was 46 metres around and five and a half metres high. So these are big, big paintings, which are circular panoramas. That's why he's quite internationally famous for that sort of that sort of artwork. But he does, he does normal portrait and landscape paintings as well but most recently uh he did a shearing shed where he built a whole shearing shed in his backyard in the gallery behind the gallery and he's painted on canvases on three walls the whole shearing shed scene it's fabulous and how does a misfit kid as you've described him from Wirribarra Forest Primary School end up building an extraordinary gallery in South Australia's outback town of Hawker I think I think what happened was he started to paint and he realised that the 
the place where he was selling the paintings the best was up at Rawnsley Park near Wilpina Pound. So he'd come from Warabra Forest, he'd lived in Laura, and he was he was based in Laura when he started to paint, but he had an opportunity over an Easter long weekend to sort of have a little mobile gallery, if you like, up in, in Rawnsley Park. And by going, this is the place where people will buy all this outback art. And so he just stayed there and he built this gallery in this shed on the caravan park grounds. And and he was there for quite some time before Miriam and the kids, she, they've got four boys, they all moved up to Hawker and they, and they moved there to be closer to where Jeff was working because it was a long way from home. And Jeff is certainly a well-known artist now and his faith plays a very important role in the way that he puts his art together. Yeah, Jeff has always said that the reason he loves to do this work is that he looks around at the beauty of the Flinders Ranges and the outback and he just sees God's creation and he feels like he wants to give God the credit. It's interesting that his Wilpina panorama has all these little um, brass plaques on the stairs as you walk up to look at this vast, this panoramic painting. And they all have little Bible verses, these brass plaques. And things like, you know, the, the creation declares the glory of God or that sort of a thing. And he he just, he also loves to think about that Bible verse about eagles rising up we rise up on wings like eagles from Isaiah. He sticks that on the back of his paintings because he feels like God has been the one to sustain him. He really does. And he and he's just he loves to say to people, this is God's world. It's beautiful. You spent months with Jeff and getting all the details and digging down deep to find a lot of stories, but you've discovered that there are a lot of miracles that happened in Jeff's life along the way. Well, he he's had what I would call an unusual number of close calls in his life. When I interviewed Jeff, we because I live, I live interstate and we were talking on the phone every week for hours each Thursday night, actually. I have notebooks full of notes. And um, apart from the times I went and stayed with Jeff and Miriam and as we spoke, it became very evident there were a number of themes in his life. One was his passion for cars. One was his passion for rocks and rock collecting. One was his art, obviously, how he'd become an artist, his love for family, his love for God, and also this extraordinary number of either accidents or health issues that had almost nearly taken his life over and over again. One that sticks in my mind is when he and his son were collecting wood, actually, um, because his son was a wood turner and they were just collecting wood out in the bush and somebody quite a long way away, oh gosh, a couple of miles away probably with a high-powered rifle had missed their target and that bullet went straight past his head into the boot of the car, into through the car boot which was open at the time, two, two bullets through the boot of the car. So literally his life has been in the balance. But the most extraordinary recent example of this was six months after Miriam asked me to write his story, um, Jeff nearly died of septic shock. He'd had a prostate operation and he, he was just almost gone. And this his legs had gone black, blue. They said they will have to cut them off because they'd lost their um, circulation. And they gave him half an hour and they said, well, just pump you full of oxygen. And it was literally 20 minutes into being pumped full of oxygen that he started to get pins and needles and he could start to get some feeling. And they they were so close to cutting off his legs. But his heart had stopped a number of times during that whole incident. So that was six months after I was asked to write the book, he nearly died. So, there, yes. Lots of cool. what you call preservation type miracles. You know, yeah. reflecting on his life uh, from those humble beginnings uh, to the OAM, an Order of Australia Medal, and international acclaim for his panoramas of the Flinders Ranges, uh, and uh, all of these stories. Uh, how do you reflect on on the change from from those humble beginnings uh, to actually being an acclaimed artist worldwide? Well, I always say that. Um it's it's hard to think of Jeff as anything but humble because he he is a very humble bloke. He's had he, he's a bush character and he really he's not one of those people who you know seems like he's aware of all this fame because we we were at the book launches on the weekend and 
Hugh Van Lee, the former governor of South Australia, was launching the book because he had written the forward to the book and he'd also given Jeff his OAM. And Jeff said, I'm looking around to see who you're all talking about. It's like he he kind of can't work out how it is that, that there's even a book written about him in some ways. It's, Miriam was convinced that it was an important thing to do to get his story out there. But Jeff, there's a funny story in the book where a bloke was walking through the gallery and was in awe of all the paintings and saw this fellow walking past and said, who did all of this? And Jeff said, I did and kept walking. He's he's just got that sort of understated way about him. So, yes, he had very humble beginnings, but he's a pretty humble guy still. <laughs> and I might say you can see some of those paintings online if you simply Google his name, Jeff Morgan, J-E-F-F Morgan, The book is interspersed with a whole lot of these beautifully presented artworks and photos too. Uh, So it's not just Anne Winkle and her clever way of writing a biography. There's also, there's all these illustrations. Oh, it's a beautiful book. I'm really proud of it and so pleased with the, the quality of the production. It's actually come out so, you know, the colour is so vibrant and Jeff's paintings, each chapter begins with a painting and then within within the chapters, there are collages of Jeff's paintings and his, we sort of use different themes. So when we have the chapter growing up in Warabra Forest, there's a collage of all of his kookaburras. Um, he, he loves to paint birds and they are, the, and, and you get to see kind of there's an early one and the change in his style is to the sort of kookaburras he paints now. It's really interesting actually to see the early paintings through to the more recent ones. But Yes, the colours and the the covers fam- fabulous because it's got one of his very wide paintings wrapping right round the front and the back and onto two flaps that come under uh, turn into the front and the back as well. So it's a very wide painting of Galas drinking at a at a tank in drinking in the water. Well, Anne's book is called Paint in the Blood and traces the journey of Jeff Morgan and Jeff Morgan, who's become a world-renowned panorama painter and uh, recipient of the Order of Australia Medal. Uh, And for listeners who'd like to get a hold of the book, uh, no doubt they can get that at online booksellers, uh, sellers like Coorong. And you can connect with Anne at Anne's website, annewinkle.com, annewinkle.com. Anne, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us today about Jeff Morgan. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.